we actually today uh, we get to talk about something fun, and, and this is maybe a reason why uh, people, the general thing that say that people uh, they always talk about at church, and it's guilt. And so, uh, like, ah, they go and make me feel guilty. But today, it's like up front, we're going to talk about guilt. So that's an exciting thing. I'm sure now you're like, I'm glad I got out of bed this morning. But anyway, but it, it is an interesting thing to look at. It's an interesting how, how we develop in our faith and in our journey and in our understanding of God. Uh, what, what is it? What's, what is this thing, guilt? And what, what's it playing in, in, my spir- in my spiritual journey and in my faith? What's it look like? So... Uh, I want to begin by just reading Psalm 32, the first ten verses in Psalm 32. So you can follow along here, you can follow along in your pew Bibles, and it's from a different translation, so it's not too often where your pastor says, don't open your Bible. But no, look at the screen, I guess, uh, anyway. But this is a New Living Translation. So here, here's the Word of God. Oh, what joy for those who dis- whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those who record the Lord has cleared of guilt whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, Let all the godly pray to you while there is still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment, for you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bite or bridle to keep it under control. May sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. Well, it's still Lent, which is an exciting thing, because that means Easter hasn't happened, so we get to look forward to Easter happening. But we're doing a series in Lent based on the book, The Shack. And I don't know how many of you have been reading it. I hope that you've read it, or at least you've uh, enjoyed the sermons that have dealt with the topics that have come up in the book. But when I first heard of The Shack, uh, the first thing that I heard of was, Yeah, Shack! All right. I don't know how we're going to do a Lenten series on Shaq, but we'll figure it out. So I was pretty excited. You know, I mean, Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq Attack, we can figure all this out. I mean, we've got, I mean, he's played for several teams, so he's been across the country. But anyway, but uh, to my disappointment, well, not a disappointment, because I, I found the book to be an exciting thing to see lots of themes that have come up in our, in our faith and, uh, and understanding who God is. But uh, Shaquille O'Neal, I, that may be an interesting study. You know, maybe. The summer study on Shaquille O'Neal and his understanding of God. I don't know how good that would be. But anyway, but anyway uh, so that's, uh, the shack's been good. And, and this topic of guilt has come up in the shack. And uh, actually, I don't know uh, what your... This is another basketball theme. I don't know if I've made the transition smooth enough. But I don't know what your brackets look like if you've been watching basketball. But this is what my bracket looks like. <laughs> it's just all crumbled up. I'm done. You know, I'll watch the games out of... Just because, why not? But this is what my bracket looks like. And I've learned, I've learned stuff over time, and, and this is one of the reasons why my bracket generally looks like this after the first weekend, unfortunately, is that I am a diehard uh, Illinois basketball fan. I just love Illinois basketball. Even last year when they were horrible, I still watch the games. But every time, even from, from the time I was a little kid and I would fill out brackets, it wouldn't matter what seed Illinois would be, I would still have them winning the first game. And then, of course, they would win the second game. And then, of course, they would make the Elite Eight. And then, of course, they'd make the Final Four to eventually play in the championship game and win. It just made complete sense. And, you know, the same thinking that I had when I was seven or eight is the same thinking that I have now when I look at a bracket. And so I don't know what this is. And and so I'm a passionate fan. It doesn't matter how much ESPN I watch. It doesn't matter how much magazine, how many magazines I read on the topic. I'm still going to have Illinois winning the entire tournament. And so, and you're like, I don't care because Purdue made the Sweet 16. You just, uh. <laughs> the interesting thing about this bracket, though, and how I fill it out, and then, and this is, you're now going to hear something that makes me sound very weird, but that's okay. And uh, is that when I fill out this bracket, I am actually thinking, when I put Illinois into the next round every time, and I'm thinking, you know, Illinois is going to win all this, I'm thinking, you know, if I don't do this, what would happen? 
You know, if I don't put them in, what if, by chance, one of the players on the Illinois team would see that I don't have them winning at all? <laughs> they would, they can't believe that this fan has no faith in them, you know, that they're not going to win it. And so, in some ways, I'm filling this bracket out based on guilt. <laughs> if they, if, if it's something, that's weird. I know you're like, that guy is crazy. But there's some guilt involved there. If I don't have Illinois winning at all, then I'll feel bad if these players think, you know, well, he doesn't believe in us, so I guess we won't show up. I don't know if that was the reason. I don't know if that was the reason they lost. But anyway, but anyway, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about guilt. We're talking about this guilt that can control us, that can contain us, that can make us do things that we don't know is right. And we see guilt throughout the Bible. We don't see guilt in just silly ways of filling out brackets, but sometimes there's even sillier things that guilt that makes us do. But we see biblical characters that deal with guilt. We see, you know, from the very beginning in Genesis, we see Adam. He takes a bite of the fruit, and Adam and Eve, they feel this guilt over them. They feel this guilt. I mean, you still have people saying today, well... The guilt from Adam and Eve, you know, the sin of Adam and Eve. Oh, it's crazy. And we have, you know, Peter who denied Jesus three times. And he just felt so guilty about not denying Jesus. And we have, uh, we have Judas. I mean, he denies it. He betrays his best friend uh, for money. And he, he deals with this guilt. Unfortunately, he doesn't deal with the guilt well at all. And so, here it is. And uh, a person that, uh, a person that, I feel that it has a great story. This is the censored picture of David. But anyway, <clears throat> if you know the whole picture, anyway, yeah. Thanks for the chuckle over there. But anyway, David. David is this character in the Bible that is, is an interesting story. It's a, such an interesting story. I don't know if any of you watched last week. There's a new show that started on NBC called Kings. And this show is, is the story of David, or based on the story of David. And it is, uh, it's put in contemporary times. So I don't know if, if you've checked that out or not. I, I watched it because I like stuff like that. And now I'm going to do a shameless plug. And if, and this, uh, if you go to the Monticello United Methodist Church website, which is MonticelloUMChurch.org, and then you click on Ministries and you find Life, and then you go on the Life homepage, there is Pastor Alex's blog. And you can read my thoughts. But my last entry is based on this TV show called King. So I know. So now one of you can go to that. So that'll be awesome. <laughs> so, but David's story is intriguing. David's story is compelling because we see some highs and we definitely see some lows. David is a guy who started off as a shepherd boy, uh, just out in the fields, and somehow, through the grace of God and through the power of God, he became the highest king in Israel. And this man had so much power, this man was trying to live out for God. But then we hear the story of him falling into sin, falling into adultery, where he's in his, his mansion or his castle and he looks out on his kingdom and he sees a woman bathing on top of a house. And he tells his guards to go and fetch her and bring her back. And bring her to him. And it's when, he, they, that she, it's when she comes that they... Uh, who are both married, but just not to each other, take part in it and commit adultery. And in that action of committing adultery and sleeping together, then they produce a child. And so David tries to hide this up, tries to hide this sin, tries to hide this guilt by, in several different ways, but eventually he just tells Bathsheba's husband, he sends Bathsheba's husband to the front lines where he will surely die. And he does. He dies. So all of a sudden, this act of adultery turns into an act of murder as well. And so you see, as you read through the story of David, as it just goes up and it goes up, shepherd boy, shepherd boy, king, and then all of a sudden he hits this pinnacle, this climax, and it just all comes crashing down. It all comes crashing down. And it's the sin and it's this guilt that we read about in, in Psalm 32, the anguish that's going on inside of him because of this guilt that is holding on to him. This guilt that, is, uh, that he's struggling with in his life. Well, in the shack, we have a main character, and the main character's name is Mac. He's also struggling with some guilt in his life as well. Uh, he has, uh, has two things that sort of stand out to me. One is his relationship with his father. 